carjacking at a gas station. Is he aware of the camera? You ask immediately after you see the video. He had walked up close, tying something around his neck as he takes that leisurely walk towards the surveillance camera. He stops moments before he exits the frame, almost like he's aware that the camera's there. This is a carjacker who moments afterwards stole the car that you see on the screen, chasing the original owners out of the vehicle and driving off quickly. Watch as the owner of the vehicle exits and walks to the front of the car like someone had sent him out of it. The carjacker must have had a weapon on him to inspire such terror in the hearts of the others. Watch the terror as the ladies are forced out of the vehicle. They run off quickly, scared of something, and feel they needed to get as far away as possible. I wonder whether they found the car, but most importantly, I hope the ladies aren't traumatized by what they just witnessed. The Halloween Masked Robber This incident occurred on Middle Country Road in Coram, Long Island. The man in a red Halloween mask and a green top walks into the store. Again, his casual walk towards the cashier is as disturbing as the gun he has in his hands. He demands cash from the cashier, who then hands it to him in a bag over the counter. Only the cashier's hand was seen, but we're sure he was scared out of his mind and might have been shaking like a leaf at the sight of that pistol. The Halloween masked robber took the cash from the cashier and ran out into the night. Fire Suppression System Malfunction This incident took place in Massachusetts, where you can see a gas station with nothing out of the ordinary happening in and around it. You can count the few cars inside the gas station and at least one person standing outside the circle of people within it. It's simply another day at the gas station and nothing out of the ordinary, but that changed pretty quickly. When it happens, you'll think an avalanche of snow was coming up from the ground, but what you see is the foam from the fire suppression system which usually kicks in in the event of the fire. But in this case, the system malfunctioned and saturated the whole gas station with foam. It covered the whole place from the ground to the top, swallowed up the cars, and had everyone within the space covered quickly in the white foam. Reports showed that a few people had difficulty breathing, and if we're being completely honest, there's something quite beautiful in the sight. Of course, it would have been very effective in the event of an actual fire, but in this instance, it was simply a malfunction which had to be fixed. Trucks burn at a gas station. Watch the thick black smoke and the red plumes of fire as it looks away at this gas station. You can hear the voice of someone in the background, a bystander probably speaking to someone else. Two trucks is mentioned as a reference to the number of the vehicles involved in it. The fiery explosion climbing so high into the atmosphere above the gas station and the thick smoke tells you that the magnitude of this disturbing event is huge. If you look closely to the side, you'll see the fire spreading beyond the trees at the edge of the gas station, but you can also hear the one sound you want to hear when some fire disaster is happening. Fire trucks pulling up on the scene. It gives you some hope that the event will soon be under control when dominoes fall dangerously. The first thing to know before watching this video, no one was seriously hurt, not one, but that's not immediately clear with the magnitude of the crash you just witnessed. Look closely on the street and watch as the fire truck is going on its own across the screen when a Lincoln SUV comes out of nowhere and chaos reigns. When the fire truck slams into the SUV, the SUV hits a utility pole while the fire truck careens into the gas station on the side of the road and smashes a van against the metal pole of the station and starts a small fire. Everyone close enough to the scene starts running quickly, trying to get as far away as possible for fear of an explosion. And I was on pump four, put the gas pump in and stuff just started flying. The vehicle involved in this chaotic coming together has six people in them, three firefighters and a family of three, and luckily no one was seriously hurt. Here's the kicker. In the summer of 2019, the same situation, same fire truck, and same location have the same outcome. The truck slams into something across the road, and someone has to go do something about that. This is the craziest way to wake up. The first question that pops into your head when you watch this video is how did that car get there? Did it blow through the back door, or is there a more interesting backstory here? It's definitely a page turner. This happened at a Midtown gas station. An employee of the gas station spotted the driver sleeping in his car at the pub. He immediately woke the man up, the man's foot slid off the brakes, and the car just rolled straight through the front doors of the building. Have you ever had to wake up with such troubles in the past? It's the funniest way to wake up I've ever seen, but for the man involved, there's no laughter. The police arrested him. I can't tell you why, because this appears to be an accident, right? But such accidents only happen when you're really drunk. Weirdest robbery ever. A man walked into a gas station wearing nothing. 
Absolutely nothing except for the machete which he was brandishing when he walked in and demanded to have someone's phone, cash, and clothes. Imagine a naked man telling you to hand him your clothes. Scary, isn't it? Eyewitnesses say he threw the machete at the victim, even after the victim complied with his request. Fortunately, he isn't the best at throwing. Out in the parking lot, before the police caught up with him, he was still naked and yelling at people in an animated way. You'll see him in the street, disturbing the peace and forcing cars to pause momentarily. Cars avoided him as he walked with careless abandon like he owned the asphalt. In the final clip, you'll see the police chasing down on him as he now lays flat on his stomach. It appears the individual is a convicted felon and the police have simply returned him to the prison where he belongs. Woman Tears Store Apart Everything looks calm when this video opens, but if you look beyond the man in denim and the woman in black pants, waiting patiently, there's another woman at the cashier's table waving her hand frantically. Can you see her yet? If you didn't see her earlier, wait for all hell to break loose and you'll see her in her full fury, pushing things off their stands, pulling goods down, and scattering everything like she just entered beast mode. She didn't stop there. She tries to open the door and when it doesn't give, she kicks and pulls, pulling all of her weight onto the door to force it to open up, but it still won't give. Seeing that it wasn't going to open, she stops and begins to pace back and forth while dialing someone on her phone. Frankly, I half expected to see someone drive up to the doors and ram it right through with a truck or something, but she stays on the phone, talking and talking until the end of the video. I hear the mayhem all happened because of a hold charge on her credit card, which explains why she couldn't get out the door when she tried, but we have to give it to her. She fought like a caged animal. Gas Station Pub Exposed Can you discuss tragedies at gas stations without touching on gas pump scams? That's the real tragedy, and with gas prices at an all-time high, it's even more tragic how people scheme and steal. You can see two drivers pull up to a gas station, parked on both sides of the pubs. They swap the nozzles quickly before one of the cars drives away, while the other car stays behind with the right nozzle in his tank, waiting for unsuspecting customers. When one drives up and sticks the fake nozzle in his tank, the thief immediately starts the meter so the victim thinks he's putting fuel in his tank, when in essence, he's paying for the thief's gas. Well, you can see now, if you look at it, the, the hose comes across the pump instead of on the side itself. The gas station manager caught everything on camera and went on to teach people a quick check that they could try to make sure they're actually controlling the pump or that they're connected to the rise nozzle. A quick pause moments after you started the meter will show you if something's wrong or not. When you pause the nozzle, take a look at the meter. If it's still reading, then something is off. I know people go through hard times, but everybody is, so don't cheat your neighbor. Criminal couple steals from gas station. This couple is prolific and has hit at least four gas stations in a single weekend. They're not just prolific, they're brazen, as their criminal activities all occur during the day without the darkness of the night to provide cover. Watch as this man parks his car at the back of the shop. He finds a way to climb up over the electrical conduit at the back of the building and makes his way to the roof. He quickly covers the store's satellite dish with a small piece of foil to prevent it from working. That's just the first part of the plan. The second part of the plan is to use a stolen credit card to make purchases inside the store without the cashier being alerted to credit card fraud. This is why they needed to stop the satellite from working, and the second part of the plan is already underway as the man's wife, or in this case, better half, is in the store browsing products to buy. Daring as daring can be. Break in a gas station store. The surveillance camera captures the interior of the store at night. You can see there's no activities going on in there. No employee or management can be seen within the store. Now look to the top right corner and you'll see when the break-in started. Something is happening, and in a moment, you'll see a man run into the store, climb over the counter, and quickly rummage through, grabbing the things that he wanted. Another figure soon follows behind him, this time a female who jumps over the counter as well and grabs what she wants before making her way out of the store through the same opening they had made to the right. Comic Relief can you see as this drunk guy walks into the gas station's convenience store, making his way down the aisle? Now look closely and you'll notice that he's weaving on his feet. He walks down, takes a turn, and walks a different aisle. His drunkenness is even clearer. It's obvious he can't stand on his feet. His weaving and inability to keep himself upright is obvious as he tries to open the fridge. There he hits the ground in an epic fall, and for a long time he tries to get back on his feet. There's an older man at the other aisle who notices the drunken comes over to help him. They get him up and start him on his merry way, but then he gets to the door and couldn't open it, and instead falls backwards again and finally lands on his butt while struggling to get back on his feet. Bike Gang Raids a Gas Station in Withenshaw, Manchester, England 
Why gangs leave you feeling uncertain? Are they criminals or are they the good guys? In this video, they're definitely not. Watch as they ride into this gas station looking all menacing in their helmets and huge numbers. They're not wearing matching gear, which makes it difficult to identify what group they may belong to. Some of them quickly rush into the station store and grab things off the shelves. One of the bikes keels over and the rider will need a hand to raise it while all hell was breaking loose around them. They appear to be without a leader, just running around like headless chickens. There's no violence, but these bikers certainly set out to overrun this gas station, and in that, they succeeded completely. But one still wonders what else they could have had in mind. Burglary at a Daramu gas station in Brimbank, Australia For a moment there, I thought we were seeing the chainsaw being put to a new and dangerously innovative use, but thank the spirits, it's only a hammer being wielded by a well-built criminal intent on having his way. Take a second look to see the moment the first hit was made on the glass door. It gave me a jolt. The man barging the door succeeds in carving out an imperfect entrance, marching right into the gas station. He steps back out of his hole to grab what looks like a bag as well as his partner in crime who walks in behind them, both of them walking around with determined steps and we must conclude that they knew exactly what they wanted to steal and where it could be found. Boom goes the gas station in Russia. If the hammer in the last video made your heart skip, the explosion in this one will probably have you jumping out of your seat. If you watch closely, the explosion isn't so unexpected because there was a small fire first, small white smoke billowing to the left and to the right, but no one reacted fast enough to keep this from escalating. Then suddenly, you see the first sign, the burst of flames, and almost immediately the explosion which appears to have taken more than just the gas station. The fire continues to burn seriously for minutes and there's simply no sign of the fire service or any attempt at putting it out. You'll remember how the street was packed with cars in the opening part of the video. This would have been much worse if those cars were all still held up by traffic when this fire took off. Captive finds her freedom at a New Jersey gas station. Who knew freedom could be regained at a gas station? Certainly not me, but this woman will be eternally grateful for the proximity of this gas station store and the quick thinking of the cashier inside. The information we have shows that the woman appears to have been held captive for a whole year by her accused captor and on this day she found the opportunity to run and quickly grabbed it with both hands. You can see her run into the gas station, her frantic sprinting caught on the security camera. The man who had kidnapped her and held her captive is the one in the blue top who came right after her before an employee with quick wits locks him out to keep the woman safe. Who owns the dog at the door though? A little extra information, the police have arrested the kidnapper and he'll face the long arm of the law, although we think a whole year is such a long time to be in a captivity. Carjacker at a Miami gas station Once you notice your tank is getting empty, the first thought is to find a gas station and put some gas in the car. Oftentimes safety is a secondary consideration. The man probably didn't think there was any danger at all as he was so relaxed and even took a phone call moments before the video begins as we see him holding his phone. The thief simply walks up to him, his hood covering his head and keeping his features slightly hidden. Once the gun was pulled out, the car owner simply surrenders without as much as a fight. Sometimes this is the best decision. You walk away with your life while nursing the deep pain of watching a criminal drive away in your car. Hopefully there's a tracker in there or something because a Bentley like this one shouldn't exist without protection. But that's just me, hoping this man gets his car back. Tragedy averted in Taylor, Michigan. When a car loses control on the road, the last place he'd want to end up is a gas station. Worse still, the last thing he'd want to hit is a gas pump, but for this driver, he did both, ending up at a gas station and hitting a gas pump, which led to the fire you see on screen. It's heating up the affected car quickly. The occupants of the car were lucky to have concerned people around who quickly swung into action and rushed in to help them escape the fire, which was only just starting. I didn't know what to think at the time. I was frightened that someone might have been hurt. Watch as they all run fast to put distance between themselves and the fire or a possible explosion, which from the video we'd seen earlier is likely when a small fire starts up at a gas station. A huge, huge fire. At some point in time, the horn like wouldn't stop at all. Thankfully, there wasn't an explosion and the fire service soon arrived to get everything under control. Again, who cares about the car when life is preserved? Shooting at a gas station in Lakeland, Florida Most of the loud banks you hear on the 4th of July are fireworks marking Independence Day and the celebration that goes on all over the country, but some of those sounds are dangerous and certainly not from fireworks. These masked men on screen are decidedly carrying something worse than fireworks. They'd parked their car at a mobile station and walked over to hide behind a storage unit away from cameras and prying eyes while they waited for their target. It's heartbreaking because no one deserves this. It was a man who was returning from a 4th of July event with his girlfriend. Obviously somebody disliked him. 
We want to know why, though. Why did y'all dislike him that much? Like the rest of us, when the wife heard that sound, she thought it was fireworks. A simple mistake anyone could have made on the 4th of July. Gas swap scam in Roseville, California. Watch closely to see what this scam artist and many like him do at gas stations. First, they switch the gas nozzles, then wait for an unsuspecting buyer to come into the gas station. The moment you pick up a nozzle and put it into your tank, the scammer does the same, and the gas you think is going into your tank is going into the criminal's tank. They, on the other side of the island, are actually using your nozzle to steal gas. It's so simple you'd think people would know when it's happening, but most times people never find out until it's too late. We've seen a few cases historically where um, where this has worked, and we've been able to fortunately catch people. To ensure you're never a victim, make sure the hose you put in your tank is on the right side. It has to be on the same side and shouldn't cross over from the other side of the pump. Scammers have pulled off this one numerous times, and you need to be careful as criminals continue to be creative. Dangerous fire at a U.S. gas station. This happens so quickly you can see the reaction of the two people pumping the gas. They're resting their backs on the car while the pump is working when suddenly they both jump immediately after a fire started, their safety instinct kicking in first as they feared the worst. I see those kind of videos a lot, but never one this close to home though. One of them rushes back to pull the nozzle out of the tank while the pump is still working, which caused the fire to escalate mildly. The two people in the video probably have ice in their veins as they still go back, move the car away from the pump, and quickly douse the flames which helped keep this tragedy under control. Reports say the fire might have been started by a cigarette or the car might have been left running. Whichever it is, I'm just glad it didn't escalate. Armed Robbery at a Compton Gas Station This robber didn't just come once. He came twice and robbed the same store at different times. How do we know? He wore the same mask and came wielding the same gun, a 45 revolver. He used a 45 revolver, so he did point it at us as soon as he walked in. The first time he came, he simply walked over to the counter, pointed his gun at the cashier, and demanded to have all the cash in the register. Two days later, he dropped by again, walked around the counter, and demanded a manager who's in charge on the day open the cash register and quote, give him everything you have. The thief made away with about $200. In both scenarios, the MO is the same and the mask and gun are the same. Every time I would go to sleep, I would see his face. So it, it is it's scary. A few days earlier, outside the store, a woman was also robbed dramatically while she was trying to fill her tank. First, a man snatched the woman's phone while she was filling her gas, but while she struggled with him, his accomplice slid into her car, grabbed her purse, and jumped into their getaway vehicle. According to the manager, the robbery outside isn't related to the one inside, but three robberies in one week? That's scary. Gas pump as a weapon. This man's my hero, and if there's a poster child for using what you have to your advantage, this man is that. Watch him pumping gas into his car, relaxed but very aware of his environment. The moment this bus pulls up on him, he's very quick in pulling the nozzle out of his tank and hoses them down quickly even before their door is fully open. Watch as he stays sharp, noticing the guy coming up to his right to get the jump on him and quickly giving that thief a good hosing down with fuel. These guys quickly realize that this man is not easy prey that they thought he was and quickly get away from him. What happens if these boys drive by an open fire immediately after they leave the station? Is karma that fast? Carjacking in Tewksbury, England. This woman's mistake was leaving her key in the car while she filled her tank. Watch as an opportunistic guy catches sight of what he felt was an easy steal and quickly swung into action. He jumped into the SUV and while the woman fights back and sprays him with fuel, he manages to drive off, almost injuring the woman. She was uh, panicked and uh, asking for her phone to call 911. The quick reaction of the police helped save the day as a quick manhunt was called with dogs thrown into the mix and soon enough, they found the woman's SUV abandoned with a suspect in the wind. It was a car we have never seen before. How it was parked or skewed? We could see it right outside our window. We knew something was wrong once we saw all the police lights. Another carjacking in Detroit. Lots of carjackings go on in gas stations. One may assume that this is a vulnerable moment for the car owner who must step out of the car to fill the tank and the criminals lie in wait for such moments. In this woman's case, she just finished filling her tank when she noticed the man making his way up to her. Suspecting something, she quickly moves towards the driver's side, but the thief must have threatened her with a weapon because she soon became mellow, standing aside without reacting. The man simply got into the car and drove off before the woman became animated again, running frantically for help. Hopefully she gets to recover her car. Running for dear life in Pennsylvania. 
The frantic young lady running with her hands up has just experienced something remarkably scary, and it's a marvel that she still has the presence of mind to seek help from the authorities. She was pumping gas when someone jumped into her car. She reacted quickly, jumping back in and trying to grab her keys when the criminal told her, you're my hostage, they won't shoot a young black kid if there's a pretty white girl in the passenger seat. The criminal took her in the car and drove for 150 miles until they needed to refill the tank. The moment he stepped out of the car to fill the gas, the young girl saw her a moment and took it, rushing out of the car and running as fast as her feet could carry her. Luckily, there was a police car driving by right at that moment. Clerk killed during armed robbery at Houston gas station. The two men with the scary face masks you see on the screen are the armed robbers who shot and killed a store clerk in a Houston, Texas gas station. They took off in a black sedan after their evil business. This is horrible. This man, 29 years old, came to this country for a better life, and he gets gunned down for it. It's not right. You can see one of them with a silver handgun pointed at the clerk. We can't know for certain which of the criminals had shot and killed the cashier, but the authorities have started a hunt for them and also announced a reward for anyone who can help. We will not let them get away with it. We are coming after you. The scene is already protected with a crime scene tape. You can see friends of the cashier as well as the police who are seeking the slightest evidence to help with their investigation. Cops catch gas thieves in Texas. The cop must have suspected something fishy when he saw this truck parked suspiciously close to a gas pump with no one in sight. A car drives away as the officer draws close and it's conceivable that the criminals seeking to steal it were in that car. What you see when the truck was opened will leave you in awe. These criminals were using a device to steal fuel off of the gas station, pumping it directly into the container in the back of the truck. It's also clever, and if the police officer hadn't tried to inspect the truck, the perps could have made away with about 250 gallons of fuel. SWAT team swarms a gas station in Philadelphia. Following the reports of gunfire at this gas station store, a heavy police presence can be seen. The SWAT officers can be seen as they make their way into the store, and when SWAT shows up, you know it's really serious. The bullet holes, which are at least 25 in number as seen in the window, show that some serious shooting had been going on there. We know at least 25 shots were fired. The problem is, how do you know who was doing the shooting? The shooters, who would have been shooting outside, all ran into the store and mixed in with the innocents the moment police arrived. The people that were standing out front ran inside of the convenience store, and the shooters still continued to fire shots. Security cameras will help identify the shooters, but in the meantime, there was no casualties despite the heavy gunfire. I'm glad we're ending this scary episode on that note. No casualties. Looters raid and steal from a gas station, Compton, California. The scenes you witness here were captured at an Arco gas station near Alondra Boulevard. The man in front with ski masks and handles the break-in, smashing the glass with something heavy to make way for the teaming group standing behind him, waiting for the door to give way. A lot of these looters appear to be wearing masks, and it makes you wonder whether this was pre-planned. Dozens of these looters rush into the gas station store immediately after the door gives way. They're said to have stolen goods worth thousands of dollars from the store and proceeded to cause damage that will cost even more to repair. According to the reports, the store clerk was in the store when this looting took place. She hid in the bathroom and stayed hidden until the looters completed their evil business. Alleged kidnapping stopped by a gas station clerk, Philadelphia. This is the greatest hero style story you'll see today, and I promise it'll scare you to the bones. The two people walking across the screen look pretty commonplace, like regular people making their way into a gas station store, but the woman in front is a hostage for the tall man walking behind her. The suspect plays it cool and goes ahead to wave at the clerk as they walk into the store. Watch their body language and you'll get a whiff that all is not right. Don't worry so much if you're unable to see the signs, it's not that easy to notice. The clerk at this gas station sees all the signs and what he does next will blow your mind. He keeps a close eye on the two as the suspect buys cigarettes with the victim's credit card. We can't say when the clerk noticed that something was off between the two, but he didn't say anything to the woman. Instead, he comes to the door just as the suspect had stepped out with the woman following, ready to step out of the store. He pulls her back in, then puts himself between the suspect and the woman. Look closely and you'll see the moment he confronts the suspect and how quickly the suspect reached into his jacket like he was going to pull out a weapon. The clerk returns quickly to the store and the suspect makes off with the woman's car. The clerk continues with his kindness, giving the woman some water to drink to calm her spirits. Police will catch up with the suspect and discover something shocking. He had carjacked the woman in the video and forced her to withdraw money from ATMs in the area before they got to this gas station store. Trapped in store after stealing They call him the Gatorade man for his penchant for stealing the energy drink. For so long this man's been stealing from this store. He walks in, stuffs his bag with the things he need, and walks out without paying. 
You can see him walk in casually and walk right out without words. Remember that cliche about every other day belonging to the thief until one day? That day came for the Gatorade man. He walked in and as always he grabbed everything he needed off the shelf then proceeded to make his way out of the store but the clerk notices him and pressed a button to lock the door. Watch his fury when he notices that he's been locked in. He screams, kicks, pulls, and does everything to open the door. When everything fails, he rushes back, drops everything he'd stolen, and begs to be let out while still kicking the door until the glass falls out and he sneaks off. Quick fire explosion at a gas station. The young man on the screen stops at a gas station like we all do and grabs the nozzle to fill his tank. It's a simple everyday task for car owners and since it's a cold day he gets into his car to get away from the cold while his tank is filled. Everything seems fine until his tank is filled and he steps out to pull the nozzle out of the tank. Not even a brief minute, you know what I'm saying, and listen to the radio and then turn around, open the door, you know, got right back out, leaned up against the car, grabbed the gas nozzle and then that was just, just like that. The moment he picks the nozzle out of the car, a fire breaks out immediately, out of nowhere. The store manager is fast. She notices the fire and hits the emergency stop button that stops all gas being pumped, keeping the fire to the car alone. Well, we were working. It was a Sunday night. And things were kind of slow and I was back in the kitchen cooking and I had a guy here that wanted some food and I made him a sandwich and then I can see something reflecting off the side of my glasses. And then I looked over out the window and you could see flames just shooting up to the canopy. So immediately I just turn around, hit the red emergency stop button. The young man only manages to escape being burnt by the whiskers as he tears off to safety. Firefighters put out the fire and concluded that the small explosion was caused by static electricity. We're just glad it was limited to the car alone and didn't escalate further. Bear steals candy from a gas station store. What would you do when you're confronted by a 500 pound bear? I'd probably leave, as most people would. Watch the man on screen stand in front of a 500 pound bear. For a moment he stands his ground, trying to shoo the bear out of the store since it's only had its head in the store. I was on my way to go change the outside trash, and I was walking towards the our automatic door and it opened. And then I seen him try to come in, so I stepped towards him, and then he comes into the store, kind of lunges at me. You see how terrified he is when the bear roars, forcing the man to jump back into fear, leaving the bear to take whatever it wants. Here's the weird thing. The bear simply walks in, grabs a bag of Snickers, and walks off. Its calm situation forced the store worker to call animal control, but when they got there, the bear still finds some time to grab a box of candy before walking leisurely out of the store. Man Trash's Store, Houston We don't know why or who might have provoked the man in the video into this act of vandalism. We can guess that he's not entirely in his right mind from his sing-song voice and the dance moves he puts on. He simply goes on a trashing spree, pushing goods off the counter, yelling at cops, and throwing a tantrum like a four-year-old. Calm down! No! The police quickly take him into custody, preventing further damage and saving us all from seeing more of his god-awful moves. Gas station goes poof. China. The first people to see and hear the sounds of this devastation thought an earthquake was taking place. Some would think that they were watching lava. Such is the magnitude of the damage, the sound, and the fiery nature of the fire which began at a gas station and rippled through the area. At first, you see the flames as it picks up and almost dies down. Seconds later, the whole screen goes bright. Whoa! The fire bursting into a powerful explosion that reminds you of the nuclear bomb dropped at Nagasaki and Hiroshima. The dark smoke that's plunged into the sky looks a lot like mushroom clouds and the tongues of the fire licking upward reaching for more. Watching this, you realize that it would take firefighters so much to contain this fire. Honest confession, I've never seen anything this scary in all my days. Oh my god! Oh dear! Are you filming? Yes, I'm filming! flying car. Some of the craziest accidents I've seen have occurred at gas stations. The moment you see this car hurtling into the air, you imagine the worst as it seems to be practically flying to the doom of the driver in the vehicle. To see the whole thing clearly, keep your eyes on the road and watch the white car as it swerves, avoiding oncoming traffic, hitting the curb, and flying into the air before smashing right into the gas station. She smacked into the sign before coming to rest besides a gas pump. I admit, I didn't expect the driver to survive that flight, but she did, stepping out of the car and looking merely disoriented. 
They say that she'd been driving under the influence and watching this, everyone else would agree that she had one too much to drink. The police will later charge her for a DUI after she receives treatment at a nearby hospital. Gas Pump Explosion, Alexandria, Louisiana Many warnings are being shared constantly about the static electricity and the danger of explosions at gas stations, but sometimes it seems the danger just hangs around, waiting to engulf you at the slightest opportunity. The older man in the video simply wanted to fill his tank with gas, but suddenly what we see are flames. He did the first thing that came to his mind, pulling the nozzle out of the tank, but that's where it all went wrong. The fire spread quickly, forcing the man to run away, putting a distance between himself and the flames. No one can tell how the first flames started, but you can see them burst onto the surface, seemingly out of nowhere. The fire eats up the car, growing with each frame you see. Firefighters soon arrive to kill the flames and restore some calm, but the truck is already chewed to the bones with the tires and much more eaten up by the flames. Carjacker Steals Woman's Car, New York This 42-year-old woman is standing like everyone else, filling her car at this gas station, but what she doesn't know is that the white car that just stopped on her blind side had passengers with ulterior motives. You can see the white Porsche stop by the left of the woman's SUV. Before this, thieves had scouted the area, and the surveillance camera shows their car cruising aimlessly around. The passenger of the car simply stepped out, bending low to sneak into the woman's SUV, which is still running, and driving off. The woman who'd had her hand on the car was dragged a little into the road, but she's lucky to survive with minor injuries. The thieves couldn't get very far with the car. They were soon forced to dump it a little distance from the gas station, but they made away with the woman's purse and laptop. The clerk shows he's gangster too. Florida. When this robber walks into this store bearing a weapon, he certainly thought it would be an easy ride. No one would dare stand against an armed robber, but what he didn't take into account is the clerk working at this gas station store. I don't mean no harm. I'm just not from around here. What you got in your hand, bro? I got a big gun, but I'm not from around here is what I'm saying. I'm from Chicago, bro. He says he's not from around here. Apparently, he's from Chicago. The clerk had seen him early enough and had quickly armed himself for the exchange. What's when the suspect on camera sees what he's up against, he does the smart thing and walks away, but the police have been alerted and they quickly take him into custody. Thief armed with a meat cleaver and a dog, Newcastle. Watch this unusual thieving crew made up of a man and a Staffordshire Terrier. They walk into this gas station store at closing time, ready to clear out the books. The man's weapon of choice is a meat cleaver, and he threatens the clerk with that weapon while demanding to have his little pink bag filled with cash. The victim had no reason to argue. He simply complies, filling the bag up and handing it back to the thief. He will hit me with the uh, meat cleaver knife if I don't do it the hurry. You can see the unusual band of robbers running off after taking $250 from the cashier and bagging cigarettes worth $1,000. Car chase and an explosion, Florida. This car chase took place about 27 years ago, but it remains one of the scariest car chases ever caught on camera. Saying that it was a vehicle headed south on 15 North into the town of Sumter running vehicles off the road. The man in the car is said to be going through a psychotic episode when he gets on the road, driving crazily, weaving through traffic, and avoiding the police through the long chase. Thus far, he's evaded every attempt they've made to try and stop him. They continue the chase, but it's getting more dangerous as it develops. At a short distance, they'll come up to a daycare center, and if it allows to continue, this car chase might bring harm to the children, and the officers knew they must stop the driver before he gets to the kids. They ram into his car from the side, pushing him into the gas station just before the school. The moment the car hits a gas pump, fire erupts. Any sane person would bolt out of the car immediately after the fire started, but this man didn't do that. The officers were forced to give his car another nudge from behind. The moment he's clear of the fire, he tried to run off again, but the police were ready for him now. Driver hurdles into a gas station. The speed of this car as it rides through the street will tell you that something's wrong. It's going way too fast, and danger certainly lies ahead for the driver in anything in its path, and only moments later, a crazy, scary crash occurs. The car plunges into a gas station, smashing itself against a gas pump with parts of the car flying in different directions. Your thoughts as you watch the debris from the car fly about is the safety of the occupants. With an impact like that, you'd think nobody could survive that hit, but the individual manages to crawl out of the car. The owner of the station is left to pick up the pieces of their lives with some very serious damage done to the pumping machine. It was very scary. The first thing that I thought was about the safety of the passenger that was in the car. 
and then after that was uh, thinking about my business, what am I going to do today? If you've watched this far, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel? We post two new spooky videos every week, keeping you informed of the dangers going on in the world. If you like this video, we have plenty more where that came from, and you won't want to miss a single one. Teenage Robbers, Enerly, Australia From their appearance, you immediately know that these are kids. Armed with machetes and bats, these young people roam a store, smashing things and stealing off the counter quickly. They were all clad in black with hoods and with their faces covered in a mask. You'll see customers quickly step out of the way, immediately after the boys run into the store. These customers are scared, and you can see why. They're said to have stolen money and drugs from the store. You wonder what type of drugs they stole and what they plan to do with the drugs. The Curious Case of Aaron Hernandez, North Attleboro, Massachusetts Aaron Hernandez was the kid who had it all. He played college football for the University of Florida Gators before joining the NFL draft in his senior year at only 20 years old. He was selected in the fourth round by the New England Patriots and in 2012 he made it to the Super Bowl with the team, managing to score a touchdown in a game they lost. In the same year, he signed a $40 million extension to his contract and received a $12.5 million bonus as well. He had it all, but his story bore more thorns than the roses on top. He was violent, and accusations trailed his life for a long time. In 2013, Aaron became friends with Odin Lloyd, a semi-professional football player who was dating the sister of his fiancée at the time. On the 17th of June, Odin was found murdered with multiple gunshot wounds close to Aaron's home in North Attleboro. Aaron's immediately became a lead suspect in what would eventually lead to his final unraveling. On the day Lloyd was murdered, he was picked up from his home by Aaron Hernandez and his friends, Carlos Ortiz and Ernest Wallace. Here's Aaron and Carlos Ortiz at the gas station on the same day Lloyd was shot five times. Watch as Aaron helps Ortiz into the car while he pumps gas. There's something off, especially in Aaron's behavior. He appears to be dancing before walking to the store and later, when he gets out of the store, he walks by his car, still dancing. Again, he puts Ortiz into the back seat. Are they both inebriated? We can't tell for sure. On the same day that Lloyd was murdered, the same day we just saw Aaron and Ortiz at the gas station seemingly inebriated, here's another video of the same man with another friend of theirs. Ernest Wallace was returning to Aaron's home in North Attleboro. The car is missing the driver's side mirror and the three appear to be in a hurry to get into the house, ducking in before the garage door was fully opened. Aaron is captured moving around with a gun in his hand. An expert testified that the gun in Hernandez's hand in the clip is a Glock and non-coincidentally, the murder weapon is a 45 caliber Glock pistol. Not just that, this video also shows Aaron with the gun in his hand before the murder and afterwards. A day later, Aaron was caught on camera after being questioned by the police, destroying his cell phone. While the cops were unable to determine the motive for the crime, Aaron was convicted of Odin Lloyd's murder and sentenced to life in prison. On the 19th of April, 2017, he hung himself in his cell. The Stalker How would you feel when a psycho stalker sticks a tracking device in your car? This young lady was having the worst time of her life as a serial stalker had attached a tracking device to her car. It was on the evening of September 7, 2021, when she called 911 to report that someone was following her. When the officer responded, she explained that the stalker had stalked her in the past and stopped for a while only to suddenly resurface in her life, calling everyone that knows her and looking everywhere for her. All of a sudden today, I'm getting emails like, where are you? Who are you with? What are you doing? He was looking for me for two days and like calling different places, trying to find out where I was. He finally got across to her asking questions about her affairs and stating that he had attached a tracking device to her car. I guess today is when he put a GPS tracker on my car. He put a GPS on. That's what he told me. He said it's either, it's on the left side tires. I don't know which tire it's under, but he said it's like a magnetic device that's stuck under my car. He said he put it in the wheel well? I don't know. Now I'm just kind of... Right. Yes, please. If you can take it off, I would really appreciate that. While this officer speaks with the victim, another cop tracks the suspect to a gas station. Hello. 
Hey, how are you? Good. Uh, my name is Officer Wynn. I'm with the Johnson Police Department. I don't know what, what, what's going on today. Okay, so that's the first time I came to I just thought she might be with someone, so I thought to see where she was. That's all I did. I didn't do anything else. I didn't. I never had any criminal history. Okay. Like that. I just wanted to see where she was and um, wanted to meet her. Who? What's your relation together? We hang out for two years. You guys are so you guys are like friends. Yeah, kind of like friends. Okay. Not girlfriend, but so that's what I need. And I said I would never contact you again. I destroyed the device. Please, this one time, let me go because I, I have like a, I'm a student. So oh. this is the one time. <coughs> so what? What's what you said? You said you thought she was with someone tonight. Yes, she said she went to the hotel. <coughs> so I thought she might be with someone. So I just wanted to see who it was. Okay. So. Uh, that's why I put the tracking device. Other than that, I didn't do anything else. So you actually put a tracking device on her car? Yes. Okay. He doesn't lie. He confesses and begs to be let off the hook, and he won't do it again. Okay. Yeah, I will destroy it, and I will go, and uh, I won't do anything again. I'm you have your ID with you? Yes. Can I get that from you? This is the only chance I need. I'm really sorry. Okay. I understand. It's just a relationship thing. That's it. They'd been hanging out, not officially dating, and they tried to make things work. Not like officially, but we were kind of like hanging out and went to like going out places and stuff. So. We were kind of thinking of that. Okay. I was work, working that, trying to work that. You were trying to work that, okay. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> you, so you, she told you that she was meeting somebody today? No, she like said at a hotel? she was at the hotel. So okay, last time we went to the hotel, she said you want to go have a full time and stuff. And But she said uh, she got a call and she want to go. And I was kind of upset. So I thought she, she was li lying to me or anything like that. So I put a tracker on that uh, the other day. And next, like two days back, she said she want to hotel. So I thought she went with somebody. So that's I had a track device like a couple of days back, last week on. Listening to him speak, you can feel how dangerous and disturbed this individual is. Have you done that before? No, first time. This is your first, first time? First time. And this For her or at, at all? At all. At all? Yes. Okay. I never had any criminal history. Okay. Just hang out. I'll be right back. Like I said, I, I need to sort some stuff out. I don't really know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I just don't want to go. Because everyone's split. Like, I have some officers over there. I'm out here with you. I don't have the whole picture, so that's what I'm trying to figure out, okay? Yeah, I I'll be right back. He attempts to call the victim while she's with the cops, and she was advised not to take his call. Don't answer that. Okay. is clear. Are you still out with him right now? He's attempting to call over here. Hey, Ramesh. For the time being, just hang up the phone. Don't, okay, don't try and call it for a second, okay? okay? okay. Just let us sort this stuff out, all right? Okay. A stalker is asked to get out of the car and asked to explain what was really happening, and he goes on to tell an even more disturbing tale. What's that on the on the on the dash? It's the camera. Well, what's what's this thing? This thing? Yeah. Oh, that's your. Okay, yeah, yeah. I got you. All right. Okay. Um. So I'm having a hard time kind of grasping what's going on, right? So explain to me, like, what? Give me a rundown about what happened today. Like you, today? Yeah, you, you said she was. You know, you had knowledge she was going to a hotel. Okay, she's at <coughs> day before yesterday night. Yep. She said, um, I said, well, where are you? I was like, we were planning to meet. So I said, where are you? She said, uh, I have a problem with like my roommates, and I went to the hotel. Okay. She, she but have like tracking device. Which hotel did she go to? Uh, Hampton. In here in Johns Creek. No. Or like closer. Peach Street Corners. Peach Street Corners. So. Okay. Like since I have the last week tracking device. I never came back here to, so I never came back to track her and anything like that. Okay. But since she said she was in a hotel, I just thought to see where she was, if she was like lying to me or with anybody else. Yeah. Because like I said, I was trying to work things out. At this point you begin to get chills and imagine the potential damage this man could have done. And worse still, the tracker had been there for almost a week. Okay, so she was going, staying at a hotel in Peace Street Corners. Yes. Um, so I went When did you, huh? What? when did you put that on there? Uh, last time we went to the hotel, I don't remember the date exactly. Uh, it's like sound like September so it's first. Been, September first. So, September first. Yeah. I found it. You found it. Yep. Oh my god. Yep. You can't get it. No, I can't. I'll take a picture of it. How did she do that? Um. So you place it on the, the on the September first. Yes, September first. And so fast forward to yesterday. It, yeah. It, she it, said she was going. to speak my officer real quick, okay? Hmm? Hang on one second. Speak my officer real quick. Okay. The cops found the tracker and the stalker was arrested immediately. The victim opted out of pressing charges. It's satisfying to hear her agree to press charges, especially when you imagine the enormous danger she was in. Hey Ramesh, uh, come over here for me, okay? Yes. 
All right. At this time, you're under arrest for un uh, no. unlawful, for surveillance, unlawful surveillance. surveillance. Okay. Surveillance. Okay. Let me take a picture. Holy shit. All right. So, yes. um, you're saying you want to press charges. Yes. So, um, what I'm going to need from you is if I give you a piece of paper, could you write down everything that happened? Um, just kind of sticking with the most recent events. All right, Ramesh, we're going to step back to the front of my car, okay? Because now you're in handcuffs and you're you're under arrest. I'm gonna I'm gonna search you, okay? Do you have any weapons on you? Nothing. Anything in your pockets? No. Uh, probably keychain and stuff, maybe. That's it. So we're gonna have a seat in the back of my car, um, and I'll explain a, a little bit some more stuff. The pepper spray affair, Windsor, Virginia. What happens when cops from different agencies get into it on the road? Your guess is as good as mine. This footage shows a confrontation that occurred during a routine traffic stop in December of 2020. Everything happened at a gas station in Windsor where patrol officers stopped a vehicle with a lone occupant. Immediately, the officers stop their vehicle and they get into it with the occupant of the car. They stopped, yelling commands while the occupant of the car can be heard asking in a gentle voice what's going on. You'd immediately think that these officers had an axe to grind with whoever's in the car. How many occupants are in your vehicle? Open the door slowly and step out! Open the door! Get out the car! Open the door slowly and get out! Get out of the car! Now! Open the door get out the car! When the occupant comes into view, the first thing you notice is that he's complying with the commands. The second thing you notice is that he's a military man in uniform. Come on, aren't we on the same team? The occupant of the vehicle happens to be a second lieutenant in the United States Army, but there's one order the soldier didn't obey. He didn't get out of the car per the instructions of the patrol cops. Get out of the car now! Yo, what? Well, guess what? I'm a veteran too. I learned to obey. Get out of the car! Get out of the car now! What's going on? You're fixing to ride the lightning, son. Get out of the car now! Get out of the car now! Get out of the car! Sir, just get out of the car! Work with us and we'll talk to you! Get out of the car! You received our order! Obey it! I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm honestly afraid to get out. Get out. Yeah, you, you should be. Get out! What's get out! Get out of like the car! Me? Get out! Now! I have not committed any crime. You're being stopped by a traffic violation. You're not cooperating at this point right now? His refusal to comply with commands had the patrolman very agitated, and they almost pull him out of the car forcefully. The lieutenant tries to play the sister force card and get some leniency. He explains to the cops that he's actively serving the country, a way of inspiring some sort of special treatment, but the cops weren't moved, and in the moment, something disturbing happens. Back up there. I didn't do anything. Don't do that. Sir, get out of the car now. Hey, sir. Get out of the car now. Sir, look, I'm trying to talk get out. To you. Okay. I'm trying to I'm talk. Get out. Just get relax. out of my car. Can you please get relax? Can get out. Please relax. Get out of the car right I, now. Now. This is not how you treat a vet. Uh, I'm actively serving this country, and this is how you're going to treat me. Back up, Daniel. I didn't do anything. Back up. Whoa, hold on. Daniel. What's going on? Hold on. One of the cops stretched his hand out and sprayed pepper spray right in the lieutenant's face. It wasn't just once or twice. He does this as much as three times. Get out of the car now! The lieutenant, with closed eyes, finally complies with the order to exit his car, but the cops weren't done. Listen! Take off your seatbelt and get out of the car! Look, I'm just gonna just please... You're gonna do what you're told. Get out of the car! Look, Take your seatbelt off and get out of the... Look, Take your seatbelt off. Look, my hands are out. Take your seatbelt off and get out of the car. My hands are out. Don't reach in there, Daniel. Don't reach in there. My hands are out. Please. Please, look. Really messed up. My dog is in the back. My dog is choking right Get now. Get out of the car. Take your seatbelt off. What are you, a specialist corporal? What are you? I'm a lieutenant. Lieutenant, get out of the car. Take your seatbelt off and get out of the car. You made this way more difficult than it had to be if you just complied. Get out of the car. I'm reaching for my seatbelt. Fine. Take your seatbelt off and get out of the car. Straight onto the ground. Straight onto the ground. Ma'am. Is your commanding officer available? Down! Let's go! Is your commanding <laughs> Let's officer go. available? Get on the ground. 
Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. They push him to the ground even as he continues to refuse to obey their orders fully. Why am I being treated like this? This is really messed up. The second lieutenant has dragged the cops involved into the court for what he barely considers excessive use of force. The fire, Connecticut. Fire is always the first hazard at a gas station, and while gas station owners and managers can put measures in place to ensure that there's no fire issues at their stations, no one can ever adequately prepare for customer error. Keep your eye on the innocent woman trying to fill up her tank. A man on the other side of her pump was done with his purchase and was ready to go when he suddenly backs into the gas pump. Here's the height of the danger. There were three occupants in the woman's vehicle, a man and two kids. The moment the woman runs out of the way of the falling pump, her priority is the occupants. She threw the back doors open and grabs the first kid while the man grabs the other kid. The fire had already begun and it's beautiful how no one tries to be a hero here. Safety first is a motto we can all get behind. With everyone now safely out of the range of the fire and the entire place safe from danger, the fire rages on, eating into everything in its path for a while. With each moment, the fire increases, thick smoke rising into the sky as the intensity grows. It goes beyond the pump to the cars around it and soon all you see is flame and smoke. By the end of the video, we have an inferno going, but we're thankful that everyone got to safety before it got this bad. Officer Involved Shooting, Oahu, Hawaii This video was taken on a November evening at a Shell gas station in Kapolei, Oahu, Hawaii. In the week leading up to this day, a string of crimes have been committed including two armed robberies and carjackings all linked to two men, Michael Kehelejo and Melvin Spilner. The topless man in white shorts is Melvin Spilner, while his partner in sports jacket and black pants is Kehelejo. While they filled the tank of their vehicle, probably a stolen one, at the Shell gas station, the police received a credible tip about their whereabouts and pulled up quickly to the scene in unmarked vehicles. The moment the police arrive, all hell breaks loose. Criminals always run at the side of the lawn. The moment Spilner saw the cops, he took to his heels. A cop tackles him in a swift move you only see in the movies, except this is real. Michael, seeing the melee, throws the car into gear and tries to get away. The moment he rams through two police cars, the officers open fire on his vehicle in a bid to stop him. They succeeded in stopping him just as his vehicle goes off the screen. His partner Spilner is pinned to the ground by some officers while others are taking care of Kehelejo. Everything ended as quickly as it had begun, with the suspects in custody and none of the officers facing charges for excessive use of force as they were all adjudged to have been within their rights, especially in firing on the car with Michael inside. The Chase and the Shots, Los Angeles, California Do you ever wonder if some things are totally unnecessary? This incident occurred on the 5th of May, 2023, and for all intents and purposes, the whole drama could have been avoided. Hector Macias was confronted by LAPD officers on patrol along the Manchester Boulevard in Hoover Street area. He was merely routine as he was observed with another female leaving an ATM point on Hoover Street. The cops, who were still in their cruiser, spoke to Hector without stepping out of the car just as Hector and his lady partner made their way towards a white Mercedes Benz parked at a gas station. Take note of the satchel Hector has slung across his chest. What happens next was sudden and jarring. The Benz kicked alive without warning. Hector and his lady friend moved in tandem, jumping into the Mercedes quickly. It's at this time that we notice that there's a third party behind the wheel. The police are forced to give chase. The officers didn't just give chase alone. They suspect Hector of being armed, so they called in a 415, man with a gun. It's a serious chase as the cops request air support as well as the support of other units within the area. There's likely no hiding place for Hector and his accomplices' flashy white Mercedes. The cop gives a clear command, stop or I'll shoot, but Hector wasn't listening. It must be some impulse in him to call a bluff or a total lack of awareness that this end is here, but he didn't stop. As he continues on foot trying to evade the officers who were right behind him, Hector trips and falls to the pavement. But he's not done yet. While the police try to pin him down, he quickly rummages through his satchel and whips out a gun. At this point, the script is written. What happens next is best left unsaid as the cops assume their lives were in danger and reacted accordingly. The Fentanyl Man, Florida. When you talk of a drug problem in our world today, it always sounds so abstract, like something happening elsewhere and not enough reason to worry. But what if it's time to start? Florida police found a man asleep in his car at a gas station, and from the moment this man comes into a view, it's obvious he's under the influence of some very serious substance. The cause wasn't far-fetched, as the cops could smell the odor of marijuana oozing out of the car. Sheriff's office. Hey, sheriff's office. Right here. You okay? 
What's going on? Oh, well, you shouldn't have left. Right? I'm trying not to. What? I mean, you're not doing a real good job, man. Huh? You're not doing a real good job, man. Okay. Well, there's no need for an attitude. You okay? Yeah. I stopped and to take a nap. And, okay. And, uh, man, I, for, I forgot I passed out behind the gas station. I... Uh, I asked the guy, I stopped, I was like, man, let me take a nap out back. His explanation for being on that spot asleep at that hour of the day was quite simple. It was about 3.30 a.m. He said I stopped to take a nap. While he spoke, he still had his marijuana wrapped and held between his teeth while an officer of the law was speaking to him. When he asked his name, he begins to stutter and lie about his name. The officer immediately realizes that something's up. Three o'clock, I guess. I got you. Sorry. Try not to blind you. What's your first name? Uh, Justin. Justin? Yeah. Do you have a middle initial? Huh? Middle initial? Middle uh, name? Uh. Oh, whatever. Um. Middle initial? Oh. Yeah. Mine. Uh, it's not that hard. Unless you're trying to make up a name. No, yeah, man. Well, I mean, why, why are y'all messing with me? Huh? I got permission to be here. I don't know that. I got a call here about an alarm, checking out the property, making sure everything's secure, oh, yeah. and I find you passed out in the passenger seat of the vehicle. And you're giving me a hard time of giving me your name. And it's past the hours of operation. It's not looking too good for you, bud, so. What, I mean, what time is it? Well, my watch is dead, but it's probably 3.30-ish, maybe. In the morning? Mm-hmm. Good job, buddy. Yeah. Oh, um. So what's your middle name? Can I, can I get myself together? Like, um, my name's Will. I don't, I don't know what, like. Justin? No, 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 no. Wilson. Wilson? Yes, ma'am. Do me a favor, Wilson. Keep your hands up on that dash. Nope. Sit up. Sit up. Keep your hands on that dash where I can see him. The man's ordered to keep his hand on the dash while the cops search the vehicle. What they unearth will blow your mind. Besides the loaded syringes, which along with the wrap of marijuana on the man's lip would explain his state, the cops found a ton of fentanyl. You can hear the moment the cop exclaimed loudly at the content of the man's bag. Police say the fentanyl found on this man would be enough to kill the entire population of the county and a neighboring county as well. Holy Yeah? Hmm. <laughs> hey. That's just a lot of fun. Uh. Huh? Bunch of fun. Drugs being trafficked in this quantity are a great menace and remain a danger to society. 